Hello and welcome back to The Note. Well, yesterday the markets heard what you would have thought they wanted to hear. The Fed did not, after all, raise rates for the first time in nine years, very much in line with what many investors had been urging. The response was exactly the opposite of what you might have expected. There has been a sell-off across world equity markets. Very many uh, investors, both angered and scared, it appears, by what they heard from the Federal Reserve. What exactly is going on? With me now to discuss this is our Chief Economics Commentator, Martin Wolf. Martin, thanks for joining me once more. It's a pleasure. Do you think Janet Yellen and her colleagues did the right thing yesterday? Well, if you're looking at it as an economic policy decision mm. and you ignore the market reaction, which might mm. be quite important, I think it's clear that they did the right thing. I actually wrote a column mm. last week saying that uh, the there was no necessity in terms of uh, US data on Unemployment, yes, it's down, but inflation is very well controlled. You're not seeing any signs of a really strong and unmanageable boom. So the economy doesn't require it. Right. And we've had a, a stream of news in the last month or two, all of which is essentially bearish for the economy. A lot of it coming from China, emerging economies, of course, uh, implications for the dollar, all of the, which add up to a, a world in which it makes sense for the uh, the Fed, whatever they thought before, yeah. to postpone the decision and to take a wait and see approach. And my reading of what they've done is that they're, they're saying, yes, wait and see is the right policy. Now, it seems that the markets have responded to that. Mm. It's the only interpretation that seems to make any sense, though it may be completely random, mm. that they've decided, well, the Fed has decided that actually the world is worse than it thought earlier. Yes. And if the Fed thinks it's worse than they thought, we should too. And so we should sell off. That's the only way. Yes. That makes, by the way, that justifies the decision not to raise rates and might keep them down lower. Okay, could I channel my uh, inner Jeremy Corbyn and try to put to you some of the questions I have received over the over the last twenty four hours? There've been a lot. One big comment that is often made is that surely, by being so explicit about uh, mentioning international consequences, isn't the Fed going beyond its mandate? Is there a sense in which it should not be taking into account such international factors when it makes this decision? The answer to that is it must. Right. And the reason, you have to, you <coughs> have to separate out its objectives mm. from its analysis. Its objectives remain U.S. stability. U.S. inflation targeting is, of course, the immediate goal. But U.S. Uh, macroeconomic stability is the mandate of the Fed. But of course, in an open world economy, highly globalized economy, in which the US is part of a very large whole, in fact, it's a smaller part of the whole than it was say, 20 yeah. years ago, much smaller, then it has to take into account what's going on in the world, yes. because that will affect the US. And it also has to take account of the impact of what it does in the US on the world. It makes it complicated, of course. But of course, the Fed has to look at the world, as every other central bank does, mm. in order to understand how its own economy is going to be affected and, and behave and what, therefore, the right policy for it is. Okay, ultimately it's doing this because of China rather than for the sake of Precisely. China. That is the distinction. Right. Now, um, another point that frequently has been made over the last 24 hours is that you can take everything there, but the way in which Janet Yellen presented things really didn't seem very hawkish at all. She seemed much less enthusiastic to start the rate rising process than she had done before. There was more of a sense that she herself didn't know what was going on. I've heard plenty of comments. This is more from the market participants than from the readers that the Fed looks as though it's scared that it's bottled out. Is there any justice to that kind of criticism? I, it's unbelievably tempting, I know, to try and work out. It's a sort of, it is the modern form of Kremlinology. Mm. If you remember the way we used to anal analyze the Soviet Union when we were young. Yes, which uh, governor is standing uh, next to What is to actually, the, is, yes. does this mean? So yep. nowadays, we apply this sort of thing to central banks all the time. What precisely does this bit of language mean next to that piece of language? And I'm sure it does mean something. So I'm not saying this is wrong. Uh, but I do sometimes feel, feel people overinterpret a little. Uh, my interpretation is that uh, that they genuinely are more uncertain than they were a few months ago. They thought then, a couple of months ago, three months ago, that the economy was strengthening, the world was mm. okay, uh, and that they were on a reasonably normal path as the economy is strengthening. It's only a question of when. Right. It's going to be soon. 
Now they're saying to themselves, well, it's just possible. There is a possibility. We don't know how big it is, mm. but there is a real possibility of, of a, 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 an important tail risk event. And the tail may be quite right. fat. Uh, and that would be associated, of course, with China, emerging economies, uh, losses on in bond markets, possibly uh, bank uh, disruption, b disruptions in banking, mm. uh, cross-border banking and domestic across emerging economies, which, remember, are a much bigger part of the world yes, than they exactly. were 20 years ago. People forget the developed countries aren't as big as they used to be. All this matters. So once they realize we don't really know what's going on in China, we've got mm. this stock market problem, we've got the exchange rate policy problem, uh, and we don't know what this means for the rest of the world. The sensible thing for a central banker is to say, I don't really know. And in that situation, um, it, uh, I'm going to indicate a little bit of uncertainty about the future. To right. Then there are lots of people who criticize them, say, show some certainty. But how can you show certainty when you well, just can't? Well, you like me, are a columnist for the FT. People want us to state something clearly or show some certainty rather than to admit to not actually being able to read the future. In your opinion, Janet and her colleagues have not undermined their credibility by admitting that they can't see the future then. I they, feel they, they strengthen their credibility by admitting they don't know. I feel that you can only be credible if you claim the sort of knowledge that you can credibly claim. And if you do claim knowledge you cannot credibly claim, you will, and it has happened in the past, be shown to be an idiot. Yes. And that's happened. I can give lots of examples. <coughs> and if you're shown to be an idiot, it takes a while for people to recover confidence in you. And the most famous example of that was, of course, early 2007. Yes, uh, yes, and exactly. the, so I think uh, a modest and humble central bank in the context of the radical uncertainties of today in our economy is the only sort of central bank I actually want. Okay. My final question, yet again coming back to the markets. If you believe the Fed Fund's futures market, there is now very slightly less, less than a 50-50 chance that they raise rates by the end of this year. Does that sound about right to you? What factors would you be taking into account as you try to work out whether we do indeed see a raise in rates by December? I think that's about, it sounds about right to me. Uh, bec but of course, it's because there is actually quite a bifurcated possibilities yes. over the next few months. One possibility is all this turns out to be noise uh, and it disappears, all these recent events. It becomes perfectly obvious that the emerging economies are okay. Things are continuing and the US recovery strengthens. Uh, it becomes more and more obvious that it's strengthening. Perhaps even we see really strong wage pickups in the next few months. And then we've got a tightening. And the other possibility is that actually things really start looking bad in which case we certainly won't get a tightening and, and we might they didn't and we it. might three months from now be actually talking about as one of the apparently one of the uh, uh, fed uh, mm. members of the fmc uh, uh, indicated uh, there's a guess who it might be well, yeah. uh, uh, one of them say, well maybe we'll be talking about a rate cut i don't think that's very plausible it's certainly not impossible so in this situation if you really don't know that this is sort of 50 50 between mm. quite widely divergent outcomes and I think 50-50 is probably right. Consistently, I felt, eight years, I felt for seven or eight years, ever since 2008, yeah. that people, economists, uh, central bankers have ex overemphasized, been too confident that they will be able to get back to normal. I, don't, I think we're in a deeply abnormal world and we might find this ultra easy money environment just goes on. Okay, Martin. Thank you very much indeed. Many people, despite what wonderful things low rates have done for asset prices, which many people in the markets make their living from trading, many people want this era to come to an end for very easily understandable reasons. We now know that we really have to be very patient waiting for it to come to an end.